Hello and welcome to episode 192 on the Online Trainers Podcast. Today's topic is Be Everywhere. Hello and welcome to the Online Trainers Podcast where we go behind the scenes to uncover the latest tactics and strategies top trainers around the world are using to get more clients, dominate their marketplace and get their clients amazing results. There is absolutely no fluff here. I'm your host, Lynn Trin. Now, I remember starting out inside of the online fitness space and I remember when I was starting to release content. And if you're having a look at my content now, I get asked a lot of the times, Lynn, how do you have the time to create the content that you create? How do you have the time to write your email? How do you have the time to create your blog posts? How do you have the time to jump on and answer questions and create videos on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube? And more importantly, how do you do this? And there was a shift in me and and I didn't, and I wasn't always like this. I wanted to be like this. I, when, when I first started out in 2014, I was like, holy crap, I'm going to go on and I'm going to create amazing content. I'm going to do it every single day. I, and it's just like the very first time I wanted to lose weight. I was like, all right, I want to go for a run every single day, right? When I was 14 and I had just had fried chicken. And I was like, that was some bad fried chicken. But the next day I was going to go for a run. And then I ran for about two days and then I stopped running, right? It's the same thing that happened with me in 2014. I think it took me about three to four goes before I actually got it right because along the way, you know, I actually feel inspired to talk. I feel inspired to, you know, write. I feel inspired to email. I feel inspired to do a video. And and I did do the video and then it would last about three, four days and then I'd stop again because I was not committed nor was I consistent enough to keep up with the work. And what happened with that is that the next time I tried, I didn't want to try anymore. So I was like, if I'm not going to do this, if I'm not going to stay committed to rocking up every single day, I look like an idiot. But then I did it anyway because I was like, oh, well, this time's different. This time's completely different. Everything's going to change, right? And that was in 2014. That was in, you know, I think late 2014. And I released more content. I think we started a website, spent tons of money on a website, started, I I said, look, I'm going to be committed to writing one blog a week. And then I wrote about six blog articles over six weeks. So I was pretty happy with myself. But then I gave in. And I I remember stopping one one night because I was like, look, it's 11 o'clock. Just got home from the gym. I'm tired. I don't want to work. 11 p.m. I worked at a 24-hour gym. So I'd finish up at about nine. I'd ride my bike home, eat dinner, and it'd be like 11. Like it's 11 p.m. on a Friday night. I do not want to write this blog. And so I fell off the bandwagon again. And... Why that was concerning, and this is what I see a lot of happen inside of our space as entrepreneurs, as people that want to create, that want to craft, that want to get our voice out, is we tend to go through peaks and troughs. And the peaks and peaks are amazing because they get you started, they get you inspired, they make you feel motivated. But unfortunately, most of us have not crafted and perfected the mentality behind instilling new habits. And what I found with this is it's truly the reason as to how you're going to get your clients to follow through. If you know how to instill a habit, if you know how to plant a seed and install a habit into a client, a prospect, you can get them to do anything, anything at all. And so what I realized was at the gym, when I was a personal trainer, holy crap, I was in shape because I was at the gym and I just make it a habit to get my workout in from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m right? It wouldn't be hard for me to go, oh, well, I have to get clothes. I have to pack my stuff. I've got to warm up. I've got to get to the gym. I've got to find parking. I've got to do all these things, right? I was already there. And so for me, staying in shape was a result of my habit. And because I made that habit so easy, because it was already there, I could already get it done. And so what I want you to think about as coaches is your ability to get your clients to follow through, your ability to get yourself to follow through first before you ask your clients to follow through. I find it quite hypocritical that a lot of coaches are so great at telling people what to do, yet they are unable to change themselves. And the reasons why I say this is because this is through my own journey, my own experience of me not following through myself. And over the last year, I've been consistently showing up every single motherfucking day, which is why sometimes when you look on the outside, you're like, Lynn, how do I get what you have? I I kind of want what you have. I'm like, dude, but you're not willing to do what I'm doing. And they're like, yeah, I am. I'm like, here's what you need to do. Here's the checklist. 
And they're like, okay, cool. So they start doing it. And then three to four days later, they drop off. Why? Because they haven't seeded, they haven't watered the seed to grow that habit because they haven't learned how. And if you want to be everywhere, you need to understand that the key to changing is instilling habits. Whatever the situation might be, wherever your goal might be, if you're looking to change your business, then you need a set of habits that's going to change your business. If you're looking to change your body, you're going to need a set of habits that change your body. If you're going to change your mind, you're going to need a set of habits to change the way you think. So many people go through life and they actually don't even think about their habits. They don't even know why they do the things that they do. What is the purpose of their habits? Most people, if we deconstruct their day, right, most people have 95% of their day completely unaware and they, it's on autopilot, but it's leading them to places they don't want to go and they don't know how to get off the train. The reasons why I do this is because... It's a habit instilled towards my end goal and my end result. And my question to you today is that if you want to be everywhere, then you need to understand, are you enforcing the right habits in order for you to change? Or are you going through peaks and troughs? Are you going through peaks? I feel completely motivated. I'm inspired. I got some clients' results and they said great things about me and I got five likes on my Facebook page yesterday. And so I feel great. But understand that there will be times that you will not feel great, just like that time that I rocked up, got onto my bike, 11 p.m. at home on a Friday night. I was a bit of a loser, okay? But 11 p.m. on Friday night at home and I sat there and I just said to myself, I gave myself all the excuses and they were very, very reasonable, mind you. These, I have a philosophy now that I tell to my team and I tell to my clients. I say, hey, you either have your reasons and, and they're completely valid. Your reasons are 100% valid. I'm not going to argue against them. Like your car breaking down, you're completely tired, you're overworked, you've got kids. They're fantastic reasons. I get it. I, I completely do. But here's the reality. You either have them or you have results. If you don't have the results that you want inside of your life, you're going to have a reason. And in order for you to get the results, you need to abolish that reason, whatever the reason is. So I don't argue with the reasons because what I gave myself then in 2014 was an excuse as to why I should not do the work. It's 11 p.m., it's Friday night, I should be out, I shouldn't be writing. Who the hell writes? No, no one's going to read this anyway. I was telling myself all these things and that stopped the chain of the habit. Now, if I had kept going could be in a totally different direction now. And So your habits determine your destiny. This is what I want you to understand because where you want to be in five years starts from what you're doing today. You know, when I look at the five-year game plan, guys, I look at what I'm doing today in order to architect where I'm going to be when I'm 30. For a lot of you guys, you guys are going to be, because I know I can profile a lot of the listeners on this show, probably 35 plus, and you're like, holy shit, he's only 30? Fuck, I've got no hope. Dude, like, you've got all the time in the world. You just need to have the patience, If you have the patience, then you'll succeed. And I was talking to my brother the other night. He just turned 39. He's an amazing dude. He's smart. He's way smarter than I am. Like completely, completely great with numbers. And I said, hey, dude, if you're going to start this thing, if if you're going to go out there and build your own business, please anticipate for the next three years. Give yourself the time, but start doing something. Start learning, start putting out content and be consistent and understand that The key to your growth is your expectation. Do not expect things to come after five blog posts. Do not expect things to come. Do it anyway. Like, just do it anyway. Make it a habit that you were going to do it anyway. And you know what? Because you know that if you do it anyway, just like I knew that if I just worked out anyway, I was there, I had nothing else to do, I was doing it anyway, my body was going to stay in shape. Have that so that it becomes automated and autopiloted for you. So one of the big lessons that I want you to learn from today's podcast episode, it's a great lesson if you really take it, is that you and your habits control where you're going to be. The reality is nobody else is going to control that but you. So the question is, you, I'm sure, can get yourself into shape. People know how to get into shape. Eat better, train more. Simple as that. The reality is they haven't instilled that habit. That's why so many people are overweight. 
They haven't learned to instill that habit. And I'm telling you, one of the biggest problems is the ability to instill habits. If you become a person who can get another person to instill habits, you will become the most valuable person there is alive. Right? The reasons why we're not getting into shape, the reasons why people aren't building businesses, the reasons why marriages are breaking up is because people cannot change. They do not know how to change. There's too much information. And that's a whole other topic, relationships. We'll get into that one day. But until I've kind of, I'm, I'm really just trying to help you master what I've mastered. And this whole podcast is a reflection of my journey across the show, right? It's going to be fantastic to look back a year and to go, holy shit, where's that Lindu change? So with that being said, what I want you to understand for today is understand that if you want to be everywhere, you cannot just do this shotgun approach and go, hey, I'm going to do that. You need habits. You need to make it work inside of your life. How does it work inside of your routine? You want to release the content on such a grand scale? Shit, install the habit and then do it anyway and commit to it. And if you're willing to do that for the next three years, you will win. Okay, so on this, I wanted to add this in because this is important. When we look at strategy on these success podcasts, I want to go through and and give you the strategy. But more importantly, if you do not implement, there is no point of learning all of this. So with that being said, take away from today's podcast episode that you can change today. It's never too late to change today. And the reasons why you haven't changed is be wary of those peaks and troughs and the stories that you're telling yourself. And what I might do is I might get Geordie, one of my coaches, to come on to speak about shifting limiting beliefs in terms of I'm too old, I've got kids, I'm too young, I don't have any money, I don't have any time, right? Right. What you can do in today's world is unimaginable. You wouldn't have had the opportunity to do this 50, 100 years ago. 20 years ago, no way. What you can do now, your ability to impact a gross scale, build a business, if you deliver value and you step up is absolutely astronomical. The reasons why I win and my clients win is because we do the things, we put ourselves in the fear zone that not many people are willing to play in. Okay, but if you play in the comfort zone, guess what? You will sit on the sidelines while you watch me and others around me grow. And come three to five years, you'll sit there and go, I saw that happen. No, I don't want you to watch and I don't want you to say that to your kids that you saw that happen. I want you to be a part of what happened. So with that being said, this is dragging out a little bit longer than I thought. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next podcast episode. All right, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave me a five-star review on iTunes and feel free to leave a review and that way I can respond and I can take that on board in developing content to serve you. Now, if you're not a part of the Online Trainers Club on Facebook, please do yourself a favor and be a part of the conversation. That's where I add daily tips, tricks and strategies on how you can build out funnels, how you can get more clients and ultimately become a better online coach. Thank you for listening.